CQR stands for Command Query Responsibility Segregation. That's weird. Let's have a quick overview of what the hell it is. And by the way, in the end of this video, I'll show you a simple trick how to improve your code navigation and productivity as well. CQRs can have a bunch of flavor. From the most complex with the event sourcing, multiple databases, to simplest one, which has one database. The core idea of this architectural pattern is to divide your system into reading and writing parts. And what about benefits? The first one is simplification of your application, especially reading parts. Another benefit can be separate scaling for reading and writing parts. Another one can be possibility to use different types of databases. For example, for reading parts, you can use NoSQL database like a MongoDB. And for writing parts, you can use relational database like a PostgreSQL. The reading parts is, uh, let's say, every calls to your API or application, we just read data without any impact on them and never write. Oh, that's not always true. I can tell you about one exception a bit later. Another tip is that the reading part has to be as simple as possible and the most effective as well. The writing part is every call to your API or application that writes data to your database. This part is typically more difficult and the code can be more complex. It mostly contains business logic implementation or orchestration in case of domain-driven design. And yes, in this flow, it's allowed to read data as well. Let's check out some pictures. In the first example, as you can see, it's a typical simple service. Use case can be following. The client calls API. API calls logic, which contains read and write parts together. Read and write operations are processed in the same way. Okay, the first evolution can be divided into the reading and writing parts. And there is just one difference. We divided application logic into two parts, read and write. We still have just one database for all operations. Let's check this flow. The client application still calls API. Every endpoint in the API calls a read or write operation specifically for your endpoints. Read operation gets data from the storage and returns it to the consumer as fast as possible. Write operation sends data to the storage in case of a simple CRUD system or prepare data from the storage and orchestrate business logic in case of more complex flow like the processing of a new invoice. This solution is perfectly fine for enterprise system with little traffic, but it's not great for the system with a huge load. Let's check a more complex variant. In this big picture, you can see a more complex solution. This architecture is suitable for systems that are under the pressure. That means there is a huge traffic. Let's take a look for the flow. The client calls API. API calls read or write side according to given functionality. Write side performs business logic and change the state of our application. The read side has a special structure for efficient reading. For example, some special view for use case. This can be applied in previous types of CQRS as well. But what is unique in this type is that you can use a different type of database. For example, it's pretty normal to use a NoSQL database. And the last unique component in this architecture is the synchronization mechanism. It's necessary to synchronize the read database from the write database. And that opens a new topic, which is eventual consistency. But it's out of scope of this video. Now it's time to return back to the simple variant of CQRS. Let's describe it in the more detail. The read side contains query and query handler. A query is a definition of the particular read operation and contains input parameters. Query handler contains code for retrieving data from the database. Read models are designed specially for a specific use case or view. On the right side, we have almost the same. A command is a definition of the particular write operation and contains input parameters. Command handler contains code for managing business logic, like retrieving data for processing and orchestrating logic between domain entities and services. And finally, it calls a repository to save data to the database. Write models are designed more generally in comparison to read models, but very often are specially designed for a specific use case or view. And now let's jump to the code. I'll show you this simple trick, which increases your productivity and code navigation as well. And this is a simple command and command handler implementation in .NET application. This code is from an event-driven microservice application for tattoo studios and beauty salons. Check my YouTube playlist on how to implement this type of application from scratch. And as I promised tip for the better code navigation, let's check it out. You should add command or query definition and handler implementation into the one file. In that case, it's very comfortable to navigate from your controller to your query or command implementation. Like this. 
Ok, back to our code. The first part is command definition. Our command contains just a simple detail for design instance creation, which is an entity from our system. Another part is handler implementation. As you can see, there is a constructor injection with entity framework core DB context. Handle method contains all command logic. In our case, is there flowing. Simple mapping DTO to our domain entities. It's possible to use auto mapping libraries or code generators. Next step is saving data to our relational database through entity framework core DB context, which is a repository and unit of work pattern implementation. The last part is the result, which is optional for commands. Our results contain just newly created ID. Let's jump to the query and query handler. But implementation of the handler has to be as straightforward as possible, because we need to just efficiently return data to the client. There is just reading data from SQL MongoDB and returning it back. Controller and endpoints. Controllers typically calls command or queries. In our case, it's via mediator library. Mediator pattern implementation. This is a simple implementation of a controller. It's possible to add other necessary stuff like transformation from request object to commands and query objects. You can add some HTTP status code mapping from result to REST API suitable result. As I promised in the beginning, one exception when writing is possible during the reading is audit log. For example, in the case where you have to write the reading date of the current entity to the database, but it's just metadata and uh, that's not practically change your data or application state. And that's it for now. Bye.